All right, so we are back with another tricks and traps video. This one is specifically about the vocabulary questions, which you have just learned a lot about, both through reading the different pages and watching the other videos. Now, I already mentioned some of the tricks and traps in the other videos, as it was necessary just to talk about the things in those videos, but I just want to take a moment to go through them again here. So, as it states in the last video, knowing about these tricks and traps will certainly help you to avoid, uh, you know, being surprised by them. So the the first set of tricks and traps here uh, that you would come across would be in the question stem. As it says here, using words or phrases that may be commonly known but have a different meaning in the context. And the best example of this one would be marked by. We went through this in the other videos, uh, specifically with the word marked, because as we went through in the other videos, marked could be stained, it could be indicated, it could be tagged if you uh, have anything, any knowledge of graffiti. Um, but as we also discussed in the other videos, none of these are the answer. It was known for. Now, there is nothing in the words marked by which have any indication that it means known for, unless, of course, you already know the phrase, or unless you read the sentence and you have to use a little bit of logical thinking. So that is one of the tricks in the traps. Uh, using words that are not well known, but are defined in the text. Now, a perfect example of this is... When you're coming across a word in a reading passage, usually when it's introducing some technical terminology, or maybe it's a word that has to do with a specific field of study, and then directly after the word, there's a comma, and then a description. That description is actually the description of the word. For example, using the, uh, using the example of graffiti, it might say something to the effect of one form of graffiti is called tagging. And then there would be a comma, and then it would say, a form of graffiti where the person uses a stylized and artistic way of writing their name or their nickname. So that description after the comma is actually the definition of the word in that example, tagging. So that is another, that's probably one of the most common uh, ways that you'll come across the word defined in the text is where it uses the comma after the word and then the description. Now, the next one, using words that are not well known and are not defined in the context. Now, this one here is not necessarily a trick or a trap, but it can certainly feel like it. Now, the best example that we have of this is in the third example with the word spared. Now, there is nothing in the sentence or the surrounding context that tells you what the word spared is. Hopefully, you would already know this word because of your English level before going into the, the TOEFL exam. But when it says the Mexican soldiers yelled that they would be spared if they surrendered, but none of the Texians believed them. So we would have to assume that the first they is referring to the Texians. You can also uh, find that out by reading the previous sentence. But there's nothing that says what the word spared means if you don't know. But if you look at the first sentence, the three Texians ran for about seven miles, occasionally firing their pistols to force Mexican soldiers to keep their distance. In other words, the Mexicans were chasing them, and they were trying to keep them away by firing the pistols. Then the Mexicans yelled that they would be spared if they surrendered. Well, so you have to use a little bit of logic. Why would they yell that they would be spared? They, they wouldn't be saying, we're going to kill you if you surrender. That doesn't make logical sense. So... It's probably not about having to be killed. Um, now, here we have one that says not killed. Um, that actually fits logically because what the, you know, the Mexicans are trying to convince them to surrender. So spared would fit with not killed. Um, but you'd have to use a little bit of logic to find this out. Um, now, another uh, trick or trap that you would find in the answer choices is, as it says here, using words or definitions that are a different form of the word in the reading passage or in, in question. So another example that we have here is in the third example with the word spared. Okay, so here we have spared with the ed ending, but you might know that there is the word spare, like a spare tire, without the ed ending, and that word could fit with the explanation of extra, but spared and spare 
have uh, they they're not really related, even though it's just one letter difference in the word. So that's another trick that they have here. You be, if you know the word spare, as in I have a spare tire or something like that, and you saw the word extra, and a person that might be kind of panicking for time might say, "Oh, that means extra," so they choose that one and move on, and that would be wrong. So that's another trick that they use there. Uh, using words that relate to other words in the sentence or reading passage. So we are going to this one here. Now, one of the answer choices is was built. Okay, so built or build might have something to do with construction, and they mention construction here. So that is actually a trick there because um, if a person didn't know the phrase took place, they might see the word construction and relate it to letter C, thinking that that must be the answer, but that's actually a trick. Um, so giving definitions to words that sound similar to the word in question. That's also with the one uh, with spared, um, spare or spare. Also, letter D, stabbed with a spear. Okay, so here they're looking at uh, the word spare and the word spear. They sound kind of similar, and if a person didn't know, they might think that that was a good choice because maybe a spare means that you got stabbed with a spear. And that's not the case. So that's another trick there, using words that sound similar. Um, and uh, I think there was the example from the other video where uh, we used the word clam uh, or the description of the word clam for the word claim. So then the next one we have giving definitions that correspond to the literal meaning of words in the idiomatic phrases. Now, this is rather than what the actual idiom or phrase means. This is in relation to one like this, took place. So took is the past tense of take, and place is referring to a location. However, we already know that this phrase means happened, and that has nothing to do with a location, and it has nothing to do with taking anything. Also, marked by. Well, marked is close to what they meant by known for, because you can imagine metaphorically it was marked in the history books by the importance of the other factors there. So that one's similar, but really it has to do with prepositional phrases. Or, um, well, this one's not a prep of prepositional phrase, but those are the best examples um, where the, the preposition has nothing to do with the actual phrase itself. So they use... Uh, actual literal descriptions of a phrase like this by, you know, referring to a location, place, located, you no? Know? Took, well, maybe they would have an answer choice that had to do with um, something was taken. So that's another one of the tricks and traps there. Now, these are the most common of the tricks and traps. If I come across any new ones as the, uh, as the exam evolves, as it's always evolving, or if you come across any new ones, you can always leave them in the comments section down below. But that's essentially it for the vocabulary section. You've already had a good deal of information in the summary video and the strategy video. This is just a wrap up of the, uh, the different tricks and traps. And now we'll move on to the master skills. So we'll see you in the next lesson.